All right, guys, welcome back to the show. And what you just watched there is just something in the works of our guest today, Daphne Silence. Mm -hmm, that just came out, I mm -hmm. think, a week ago or something. Yeah, yeah so amazing production, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. The story of a your employed graduate who intervened in the scuffle between her neighbor and an adolescent girl. But that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about, we're going to be talking about Muri, one of her works. But we have with us in the studio an amazing, talented film mm. director. Mm -hmm. She's not just a producer, but she's one of the very best in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Africa. Amazing writer The amazing well. Beardun Stevens. Yes. Welcome to the show. Good to have you. Thank you very much. On it's great to have you here. Board. I mean, uh, seeing all of your works put up here and even in the world, it's just encouraging yes. to all the women because we mm -hmm. have very few female directors mm -hmm. and writers mm -hmm. that are still in the game. Mm -hmm. So kudos to so you. Let's just, we have to mention your profile. You mm -hmm. know, Nigerian yes, film please. director and founder of Shorter Speed Project, and she's directed some of Nollywood's biggest romantic movies, including Big Love, Breaded Life, and Picture Perfect. Mm -hmm. And a recent movie, Mui and Co, is set to hit the cinemas on 12th of June. So we're talking about how to break barriers in a male-dominated male field. How have been able to do that? Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you're one of the top directors in Nollywood. Mm -hmm. How did you even get there? And did you always want to be in film? I've always wanted to be in film, but as an actor, Mm -hmm. And um, endless, uh, and I've, again, I've always, always been a story writer, mm -hmm. always been a script writer. And so, in the hustle mm -hmm. to find the acting gigs, um, and it wasn't coming through, and you know, I just thought maybe let's try something else. Let me try to be behind the scene again because I'm very fascinated with storytelling. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was it was a transition that that was worth it. I didn't. I think that my place really is behind the camera and not in front of it. Really? I, I think you, you don't do find that in the yeah, because, <laughs> Although, I think in front of the camera, you like to play hilarious, hilarious yes. roles. So yes. it's like, it's like your alter ego. Yeah, well, you know, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well, let's go to your last film. Your last film, That's a Big Love, was one of the highest grossing uh, romantic, uh, cinemat cinematic releases of uh, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, how do you... How do you handle all of these pressure with all the awards that he got and record making films? Mm -hmm. how, does it, how does it make you feel when you see that you are, you know, copying all these awards and just being on top of the game? Um, I, I think that the reason for doing this was not really for the accolades. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very passionate about storytelling, particularly human angle stories. Mm -hmm. You know, I like a film that you can touch. Um, so every time you watch my film, you go through all the emotions. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that is the greatest accolade. When people say, I completely felt what, what your characters were feeling. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, um, the awards and the accolades are the icing on the cake. Um, I've, also very, I've also learned very early that um, I'm not running anybody's race. I'm my greatest competitor. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to break my own record and nobody else's. Yes, yes. So, and, and while still trying to stay as authentic to why I do this, which for me is a higher purpose, as again, something flimsy. Mm. So there's no pressure from the exterior. I think that whatever pressure I feel is me mm. ensuring that these films that I make don't lose um, the, um, the authenticity mm. that, they, that they are supposed to have. And of course, the fact that I want you to feel every single every single time you watch yeah. it. Yeah, now, Gloria is like a second production with Ipindu. Mm -hmm. It was in like working I think with Ink Blood, we've come to a place where we are family now. Mm -hmm. um, it's always like, don't know what else would you like us to do together? And I like that they are always excited to jump on, you know, the Beardon Steven train and they support the work. Mm -hmm. um, I think that filming Muri and Co was very beautiful because, again, at my very first, my directorial debut was with Kunle Remy in Tiwa's Baggage. And after that, we've done a couple of films together, but it, it was uh, more like Kunle, it's enough. Let's do something else that people have not seen you do I before. Do before. Yeah. And so it was pretty much Bistola, Femi, Jacobs, MM. I'd worked with everybody in different capacities. So it was like, family, gather, let's make another film. I think the only person I hadn't worked with before is Buchi Franklin and the revelation of the film thing, the 10 year old boy called, you know, who I think did remarkably well in Morianko. Yeah, you know, child actors are very, uh, very rare to find. I mean, you yes. find you want good to ones, handle, good, good ones, ones. Yes. you know. But I mean, being a film director gives you a form of a creative control over what you put out there. Mm -hmm. And 
you've been doing it for so long, it's easy to just get lost in that, you know, space of wanting to put everything together. And also, how do you keep yourself in track, not to lose the vision, the essence of why you even decided to go into film directing in the first mm -hmm. place? I think understanding the purpose as to why I do this, um, reminding myself of why I'm doing this, um, is very key. And also, I know when... I don't need my voice to be heard on something. Mm -hmm. I've also come to value very much um, contribution, collaboration. And so when you begin to collaborate, it means that other voices are going to be heard in your work. And other people begin to see and um, engage in your own creative process. Mm -hmm. And I think at, at a point when it's just your voice, your voice every time in a project, it sort of becomes monotonous, mm -hmm. right? But when you have collaborations and you open yourself up to um, contributions from other people, it sort of, you know, enriches your you know your your, your, whatever your, your, creati the, the message, your creativity yeah. you know and, and that's what I've learned to do I know when I need to be still and listen and accept and I know when not to accept interesting mm. now you're literally one of the best and there are not many female directors we have but have you been able to overcome the challenges in a male dominated environment because a lot of men this is what they do but mm. have you been able to overcome Oh, I know you have stories, plenty of stories for days, yeah, so many, but yeah, just, achieve just little success. years. How have you been able to overcome this? It's a huge challenge, honestly. Yes. Um, when people ask me this question, and I keep looking back, and I say, I never had any challenge. Wow. Um, because I think I was in uh, the, the likes of Amaka Igwe and Tokwe Oshin, the women mm. before me, and Mimi Song, had sort of, you oh, know, we did away. those grass for oh. us. Um, so it was easy. I think that by the time I came into the industry, the, the men were ready to have the women come in. Because I remember that my very first from the visit was, it was, you know, um, funded by a man who just looked at this girl from film school and said, I like the story, mm -hmm. let's, put, let's support you. So I cannot stand here and say, um, I have not enjoyed um, support from the men in this industry. And I also think that um, the men also know when you have something to bring quote unquote to, to the, the table. table. <laughs> and so they know when to support you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mm. I've always enjoyed their support. And perhaps because I'm six foot one. I'm quite <laughs> so intimidating. So before you talk, you think twice. They listen and they pay attention. <laughs> just that you yeah, <laughs> the to see, like, <laughs> <laughs> it might be your last. Okay. You know, but I mean, Kule Remy, I've seen that he's someone that you've always worked with uh, often um, back to back and some of other talents that you you always work mm. with. So if I should ask as a director, what are those things that you really look out for in a talent, like before casting mm. or putting in any of your projects? What are those key things that you look out for? Um, diversity, mm. variation. Um, it's great to be a fantastic actor, but you cannot be an actor who does just one thing. You know, it, for me, I think that even as a creative, at a point when you keep working with the same person and there's nothing else. You get, you get bored. bored yeah. But I enjoy working with certain actors repeatedly because they are like onions to me. Mm. I keep peeling. What else can you do? What else can you do? And, you know, we've done it with Bisola, done it with Bimbo, done it with um, Jessica Nze in Momiwa. And so with Kunle was like, it's time. Mm. Let's peel. What mm. else can you do? Mm. You know, just so that the world can see. And again, we're looking for a shock value for Muri. You know, and I thought, and I and I thought, we, you know, in agreement with England, that Kunle Remy was a good shock value because people never would have thought to see him mm. as, you that know, term. as a mm. towel or a pickpocket, a local pickpocket. Yeah. Mm. Okay. What is your favorite film so far from all the films you've you your put favorites, out there. you put out there? <laughs> what is your favorite? <laughs> I love all my films, um, but I think that, and I don't say favorite. Um, I always say, I think the film that I like connected, I feel like is my very special film, very special to me, is Joba. Mm. Um, again, because of how the story came and how it was done, you know, for me, it remains a film that is really, really close to my heart, mm. Joba. But I love all my films. Mm. I think all of them come with different challenges yeah. and they're always yeah. different yeah. stories. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, for Maria Cole coming out 12th of June, what should cinema go as look out for what should be i mean i'm going to watch this film I've never, mm -hmm. what should i look out for make go watch her. <laughs> <laughs> um because not just because i wrote the film but yeah. um i think again there's a cinematic universe that we've been creating every time which we've seen in picture perfect you've mm -hmm. seen it in breaded life and it is our same cinematic universe where mm -hmm. the high meets the low mm -hmm. and how they converge and find similarities you know, I feel like as human beings, no matter how high or how low you are, there are middle points where you converge together mm -hmm. and, you know, the goodness of the humanity. So, again, it explores that unique friendship um, between um, an adult and a young boy. Mm -hmm. And 
um, the things of redemption is very prevalent, reunion is very key, and it's comedy. It's such an adventurous film, and I really feel that Kunle really gave 110, mm. you know, to this. I mean, the guy even did a, a single for the for film, you, you know, which is the, um, the song you hear all the time on TikTok now. Um, Shea Baby, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and it had some amazing actors, Kiki Adiaga, um, uh, Bisola Yola, Buchi mm -hmm. Franklin, Femi Jacobs, and everybody, Wura Black Gold, everybody came out, you know, to deliver the best. So it's not just comedy for comedy's sake. Mm -hmm. For me, comedy must have heart, and this film has heart. It's heartwarming. A little, a, a teeny, teeny, weeny bit of emotion. I'm teeny. It will, not, it will not be complete if it does not have that. Mm -hmm. Teeny, weeny bit. Um, but it's yeah. such a good, uh, fun film. And it's PG-13, which means everybody Anybody can watch it. It's family you know? friendly. And, you know, enemies. I, I was going to ask this for females who want to go, who want to do what you've done. Mm -hmm. What word cool of advice? Because, you know, females are getting the space, they're mm -hmm. directing, mm -hmm. they're shooting films now. What would be that one word that would, you just think this is it? for any female who wants to break barriers like you? I think that, you know, finding your voice. What is mm -hmm. your voice? What do you want to say? Um, many, many filmmakers you know, male or female, many times were fascinated by the glaze, the glam. Mm. Um, and it's easy to make one film and you don't make another one. The most difficult thing is to, you know, Keep continually make good films that connect with people. So it's important to find your voice. Mm. If your voice is horror, if your voice is love, if your voice is, you know, <laughs> politics, just find your voice and stay true it's to true that. To it. Yes. Consistent. Thank you so much for coming. Thank to you me. for having me. Thank you. I was going to ask again, definitely yes. silence. What is definitely silence about? Because... I mean, we know what Mary and Co is about. Yes. What's Definitely Silence so about? about. Yeah. Um, Definitely Silence is, a, is an EU spotlight initiative okay. um, that focuses on GBV, gender-based violence. I think that um, gender-based violence is one of the longest crimes that have ever existed, way before you and I were born, and it will still be there. It's, also, it's just that it's important to tell victims or even witnesses to speak up, to speak now, and to speak loud. Mm. Because there's help, there's help. Um, the UN is doing such a, a lot mm. um, to, to help. It's not just about the rescue, it's about creating pathways for them to forge ahead and have a, a better future. And those pathways are explored in indefinite silence. Mm. So it's not just about shedding the light on GBV, but more importantly, what people are doing, what the union, what the initiative is doing it you know, for gender-based violence oh, yes. victims and how they don't just rescue, but how they also help them to create new pathways to sort of alleviate the trauma that they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Just, so yes. just before you go, um, what would be that one thing that you feel like you could have done better um, through the course of your journey as a film director uh, before you got to this space? What's that one thing you feel like, okay, I could have done this better, stuff like that? Maybe I could have started earlier than dancing around. I, I did do quite, quite a dance. Wow. Um, before finding my career, mm. I did quite. I mean, I was on radio, on television, and in, 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 in advertising. I did a bit of a dance before I found out, okay, mm. it's film. So maybe started a bit earlier with the grade. Why did you feel like you to start? I'm sorry? Why did, why did you Do feel like you, yes, it wasn't um, that you were not sure of what you wanted? Um, but again, I also don't regret the dance. I, I think that all of those journeys mm. um, sort of equipped me to be the filmmaker that I am today. Mm. You know. Yeah. I want to the very best. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Right. All right. So, guys, you have it. We had the amazing Beardron Stevens with us in the building. And um, you heard it from her mouth. Uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we have White Money with Coming us through. in the building. Don't go anywhere.